We've got incredible landscapes here and these form really important preservational environments for the archaeology in the Outer Hebrides. We've got the most brilliant sites of international significance from some of the best preserved Neolithic tombs in Scotland to preserved Bronze Age mummies. Although we have lots of fabulous archaeology, most of the time on the ground there isn't a great deal to see. A lot of our archaeology is buried and that presents a real challenge when it comes to how we communicate these sites to people. We had a vision for how we could try and enhance the archaeology here. We wanted to think about how we can creatively communicate those stories to as wide an audience as possible. One of the light bulb moments was working on an excavation with colleagues from UHI and we had some students who were playing a game on their phone and it was an augmented reality game where they had to shoot zombies which would appear uh, jumping up from behind this beautiful brock that we were excavating. And it was at that point that I thought, wow, well we've got, we might not have zombies but we've got mummies in newest. Could we show that um, technology like augmented reality through a phone app was a useful and meaningful way to engage people in archaeology? Nature Scott set up the Natural Cultural Heritage Fund which seeks to support projects all over the Highlands and Islands to develop visitor facilities. And that was funded through the European Regional Development Fund and Newest on Earth was one of the successful applicants. And that gave us the first brick in the wall, so to speak. Another really key step in that process was teaming up with our local council. The Coralie co-funded the project We've always had an ambition to look at developing experiences along the Hebridean Way, the walking and cycle route from Barra to Ness. And this was a great opportunity to raise the bar in terms of what that heritage sector does and how much it contributes to the local economy, especially tourism, and doing something that was innovative. We're proud to have supported financially, the US and Earth project. When we heard about this, we thought, yes, absolutely fantastic. We'll definitely support that. So having that local stakeholder on board, that local partner again, was really important to us. Why would one not want to promote one's own island to, you know, with the enthusiasm that the, the team showed? The Coralie also then, uh, in partnership with UHI out at Hebrides, developed a partnership agreement where we would manage the financial management of the project. So it's led by ourselves as archaeologists. Finding the right digital design team was really key. So we had to make sure that the procurement for the app was absolutely spot on and we were delighted with the response. We were the lead on the technical side. We've worked a lot in the past decade in augmented reality and virtual reality based storytelling and they brought a whole load of other sort of creative um, elements to our existing vision. Our team consists of specialists across content production, animators, 3D modelers, reconstruction artists, and developers who are responsible for all of the programming and coding requirements. When you get to these sites, you scan our beautiful QR code and it will bring up this life-size reconstruction of the site as it might have looked in its heyday. archaeology of ancient sites with modern technology so that people who are using their mobile phone apps can go out onto the Hebridean Trail, identify the sites and really bring them back to life and see what they were like at the time when they were being used. You might be able to pull up uh, a 3D model of some of the artefacts, such as uh, a beautiful gold ring from here at Hallen. Some highlights from this house are the mummified remains that were discovered here by the University of Sheffield. I guess here, the artefacts, the the rutin, are the wild here, Faradona mummies. Just injecting that sense of playfulness. So you can be in an Iron Age brock whilst you're standing outside on its ruins and see what it looked like when it was in use. 
So it's quite an amazing project really. This hasn't been done in archaeology in Scotland before uh, and we're really proud to be one of the first groups of people doing this. There's a series of glowing blue dots, you press all of those and that brings up multimedia information which tells you more about the excavations and the discoveries from these sites. Letting you dig deeper literally unearth some of those stories. We've really pushed the technology that is location-based and location-triggered, and to be bringing that to an area that historically has problems with connectivity just makes that all the more fun. In my show, I have a talk. I have a Gaelic, my first cutter mach the Roundhug archaeologist. Gaelic language is the language of the region, and we've worked with Kiolas Ursh for that. She do nye vaiolach it na wari ken aigus. She merge biag kine ken aigus fisserahug. Liam Krauss has brought together some really fascinating stories um, from local folklore that we've got embedded into our app. So the stories link to place and are ways of enhancing our understanding of these archaeological sites. Badunya sa ski the show va gamora kretchen asa tluog. Tluog targ an tluog hitunya mantahada. The landscape, the environment, all of those things that make you inherently unique were also what made the Augmented Reality Project so fantastic. All of our models are based on um, archaeological research. They're as accurate as we can possibly make them. We mined lots of archaeological reports. We spoke to the people who had excavated these sites and then gave that information to Peel Interactive and worked in a really collaborative way. We looked at animation, gameplay, worked with the community to find the best ways of delivering those stories. The Hugh MacDonald animation that we did with North Jewish school pupils is probably my favourite thing. They really took ownership of it from creating the storyboards, the colour scheme, the script, recording their voiceovers and creating that animation. <laughs> Some of the challenges were in relation to getting over to the island regularly to meet with the project team and to do the essential testing that's required out in the field when you're producing an augmented reality application. Some of the other challenges were connected to the lack of data connectivity and Wi-Fi availability and also the variable GPS connection across the island. So we had to find ways of working within those limitations and find solutions that really enabled a very stable and reliable user experience. I was blown away by the app, as most people are. It's one of the first places that's ever had this kind of advanced, modern, archaeological approach. The ability to walk through these buildings as they were is quite astonishing. It's almost like going back in time. The presentation, I think, by the team who led this, Becky and Emily, you deserve huge credit, as does the whole steering group. This helps you picture what it might have been like then. So then what we've done in here is brought out certain elements of the app into an exhibition. And then we've just got a couple of different interactive screens where you can find out a bit more about the sites on that one, you can find out about objects with this one. It's really exciting for us to be launching this exhibition. It's about shining a light on the archaeology that we have in Newest. We have amazing artefacts and we've got all these fascinating stories to tell. We popped up there uh, for six weeks in June and July at our local museum here in South Newest at Kildonna Museum. Aha ha kujach ha in in a screen he can fit it to current suah tron tron artifacts I guess gan goid mangoorsh fit it to kaiet dora ama doi faten a vinit he can a year to ama ama doi taski. We also did some 3D printing of some of the artefacts that were discovered so that there was a really tactile handling of objects and understanding of those objects. The 3D printing is really interesting because it's based on the, the scan of the actual object, so it's yes. completely accurate. We've got a really lovely interactive tactile puzzle on the third plinth where you can look at the composite mummies and putting them together like a jigsaw. It was the VR bit that I loved best. 
So I've tried those headsets and I can tell you that it takes you right there. If you point that at, the, it brings the roof off the structures and then hits them back up. <laughs> Utilising the 3D models and 3D work that we'd already done in the application, we then repurposed that content and applied it in a virtual reality setting. My goodness, navigating on VR headsets was really quite strange, but also quite frightening because I think I ended up in the fire. <laughs> We've seen a whole range of different people enjoying that, from children through to people in their 80s. I think the project has um, achieved even more than we anticipated. We've had loads of positive word of mouth, and loads of invites to, to pop up at other places. We've taken it to the British Museum in London as part of the Festival Archaeology. We've done lots of local community events around Eurist. No entrance way, yes, you might have to duck a little bit. And it's also going to go to the National Museum in Edinburgh. We're going to Holyrood, Scottish Parliament in November, and then coming back to Thai Kursava in 2023. It has also gained significant publicity across the country and even internationally. Tomorrow, we are flying to Budapest. We are speaking at the International European Association of Archaeologists Conference, and we're giving two papers on Eurist Unearthed. We may get visitors from these places that might never have considered coming here. For them to learn how to set up something similar in their own places, but to experience it themselves first. We're also running lots of engagement events. When we were launching two new sites, Bornish and Kildonan, we led two guided walks to show people how the app works and to invite people to come and have a go. We had people from the area, voices speaking English, Gaelic and telling stories. Sometimes we find layers where windblown sand has come in and inundated the house. Take the roof off these and then if you press it again it will take the walls away. The wonderful wheelhouse which took an awful lot of patience and precision work. We were absolutely delighted with the turnout for that event. It's just nice to look at it in a very different way from what I'm used to looking at it because I know the site well from playing as a child. This has been the best project that we've worked on possibly ever. The partnership with UHI out at Hebrides has been a pleasure. It has brought a lot of attention to the island, which is good for business. It's also made people proud of where they are and opened up the eyes of the community to the wealth of archaeology we have on the island. It helps to connect people who are living in the Western Isles today with their forebears who were there so many generations ago. It was an ambitious brief and I think being confident about our ability to deliver that as a team has really paid off. I think it's given all our partners the confidence to consider how then can we take this further. It just transforms your whole concept of what you is like and what it was like. The success that's most important to me about this whole project is that we've reached new audiences from school children to local history societies, families and young people. We're seeing the numbers increasing month on month in terms of download statistics. We've shown that proof of concept. We're breaking new ground. We see this as the beginning of ways in which we can interpret our archaeology in the Hebrides. We've got a huge amount of evidence behind us which shows just how transformative this project has been. The favourite thing for me is that we're going to go on and do something else. Well, the hope is that we'll be able to expand this project so that it covers a lot of other sites all along the Hebridean Trail from one end of the Western Isles archipelago to the other. And it certainly lays the groundwork for other activities within the wider objectives that we have for the development of the economy and we will be looking to add more partners and do further collaboration.
we really just need to continue that fantastic support we've received from funders to make the next phase happen. We really need um, a funding organisation who can see what we've done, see the difference that we've made here, um, see the impact and is willing to support us in taking that a little bit further. And I'm just excited to see where the project team take it next. <laughs>